Hey there. If you're into remote podcasting and you want to record your track and your guests directly into an audio application, you probably already know that you need to find a way to get the audio from two different sources routed into your computer. And one way to do this is to use some open source software called Black Hole, and that sets up a virtual mixer. I watched some YouTube videos myself, and I struggled with my setup for a long time, and I'm going to show you how I got it to work so I could route audio from either Skype or Zoom into Reaper or into GarageBand with separate audio tracks for myself and for a guest. So let's go. So the first thing you need to do is you need to install Black Hole. Now the thing about Black Hole is you're not going to see it as an application sitting on your hard drive later, like you can click and open it like any of your other applications, but it is there on your hard drive as uh, something you can select when you get to your audio MIDI settings. I believe I set up the subscription here and then I went on to GitHub, which is where you download it from, download the installer. So then I went ahead and I installed it and then I moved on to my audio MIDI settings. Basically any of your devices, whether they're virtual or real physical devices, they would be listed here. The way to set this up is to click down here in the lower left corner, select create aggregate device. I've already done it here. So what you're looking at is what I set up. So I'm using this audio interface, the Rode, and I have already installed the Black Hole 16 channel. Those are the two virtual devices or real devices I'm using. The Rode is my input device. Everything's being routed through this audio interface. And the Black Hole is going to be what my virtual caller comes through on into my recording program. You also have to make sure that you click the drift correction boxes over here. Now you can see up here, we have these subdevices, the black hole, and we have the road. And the input channels for the black hole are 1 through 16. Now you notice that number 17 over here, that's actually going to be the road. And that will make sense to you when we set this up in an audio program. So let's take a look at what happens in Reaper if we try to record a remote guest into Reaper. And I've already set this up. I've already set up Reaper and tested this out before, but I'm going to walk you through it. Most important thing is, of course, check your preferences and your audio settings. So the device won't be the first time set up to what you want. You're going to have to set it up so that your input device is the black hole aggregate device. Second thing you need to do is make sure this checkbox down here is checked. Allow use of different input and output devices. And they say it's not recommended, but you can't really do this unless you check this. And in this case, my output device is my audio input device, which has my headphone monitors and my microphone attached to it. Okay. So now I've already set up these tracks and you can see that track one is picking up my voice. And you might wonder if you're not familiar with Reaper, how do you get these tracks in and how do you set them up? Mm -hmm. You have these channels that get set up here whenever you set up a track. So that enables you to select what is your device. And in this case, you can see this says the road and this as the black hole aggregate device. It actually is input number two. And let's just imagine if we were adding another track, you would then have the option to record enable it. You would go down here, you would click this button to record enable it. And as soon as you get that, you then have the option to select an input. And as you can see here, the stereo input is what you would want for your guest. And you have these tracks that we talked about. We saw these in the audio MIDI setup, what, 1 through 16. Uh, you would do that. This track, my audio track, is set up to be mono, as you can see here. And you can see at the very bottom, it says front center, road, AI1. 
We can delete this track. We don't need it. So now we're back to the original setup and we want to do some tests. So what we would do is start recording actually. So you can see my voice is being recorded here in track one. So let's go ahead and do a sound test in Skype. Make sure that my caller would be heard and picked up by track two over here in Reaper. So as you can see, here's my microphone, the Rode input, and you can see it's being recorded here to track one. Now let's go over to the test audio. We want to see if this will be picked up on track two. And there it is. You can see it coming in here, and here's me. So this seems to be working. So that's basically the main setup here. You would, you know, keep your audio running. You want to be able to monitor yourself on your headphones, which you're able to do in any good audio input device. Put your XLR mic into it. Uh, you should be able to hear your guests through it, and you should be able to monitor yourself through it, which is what I'm doing right now. And let's move on now to GarageBand. Local audio coming in. You can see it coming in right here. And we have remote audio. That's supposed to be my Skype or Zoom. Let's take a look at the settings. Now, I had this set up like so, but I actually think my output device needs to be this. There. Let's try this. Input is black hole. Output is the road. Go back here. That's fine. And we take a look at what's the local audio settings down here. It is channel 17. Remember what we saw in the audio MIDI settings? Channel 17, black hole aggregate device. The remote audio, which would come from either Skype or Zoom, is channel 1, black hole aggregate device. The next thing we need to do is we need to arm both of these tracks for recording. And the way we do that is you right click and you choose configure track header. You make sure record enable is on. It is. And now you hold down the shift key and you hold down the record button on each of these. And we'll go ahead and start recording and see what happens. If I don't see any audio being recorded on the second channel, on the second track, then I think I'm doing this correctly. So the next step is move on over to Skype. And here we can see the microphone input is happening just fine over here. Uh, the road is selected as the microphone. The speakers are selected as black hole aggregate device. So let's try the test audio on this. There it is. Whoa, very loud. So yes, this seems to be working. That's great. And I think one more thing we need to test uh, is to also make sure that we can set this up for Zoom. So let's quit this. So now we just need to uh, check our settings, our preference settings for Zoom. First of all, we've got the speaker is set to black hole aggregate device. Okay. We're going to test the speaker and we're going to watch what happens in uh, GarageBand as we do this. So you may not be able to hear the test, but you can see the test if you look at the remote audio here. Let's watch the remote audio again. Okay, that's working. And then my microphone is what you see here, the road, and you see the input level, and uh, you can also see it going in here into local audio. So just for the heck of it, we're gonna just um, record for a sec. And here we go. And you can see here the waveforms as I am talking into the local audio. And we are now going to test the speaker at the same time. 
and you can see there's the speaker is coming in on the remote audio. I'm continuing to talk in the first track, local audio. And again, the test speaker should come in on the remote audio. There it is. Okay, so I think we are would be ready now to record a podcast. So to wrap this up, you need to use an audio input device that connects to your computer with USB. Then download and install the black hole software from GitHub. Configure a virtual aggregate device in your audio MIDI settings. Select that device for the sound in your system preferences. Open your recording application and set the preferences there too. Set up your tracks for recording. Set up your sound preferences in Zoom or Skype. And that's it. Believe me, it does take a while to get it right, so be patient.